Hi, I'm Jason Sterling. Thanks for joining me for the first of a series of speed builds and tutorials following the construction of the Xanadu Beach House for the Gavin Brothers and their coterie in Solani. There are two things you should know before we start. First, some of the build tips included in this video will require island living and seasons packs. And although you might be able to devise your own processes in both cases with other objects, and I encourage you to try, I wanted you to know up front. Second, you'll need to activate the Move Objects Cheat. Now any instruction in this video referencing using the keyboard as we are about to do is based on an American style keyboard. The combinations of keys needed in game may differ from country to country. And if so, you may need to do a quick search online to uncover your regional method. In this case, press Ctrl, Shift, and C at the same time on your keyboard to open the dialog box in the upper left corner of the game. Once the box is open, type the cheat that you see here on the screen into it and press enter. Now let's get started. I'm inspired by the 1980s with this build and in this video we'll tackle the first thing I placed which is a sort of grand four-story plate glass wall constructed of slanted roof panels as done here in my high fashion penthouse I created for my Shuno about a year ago. In this case, I want a very tight, streamlined appearance without thick outer walls and with minimized central support columns. I wanted it very outwardly angled like the bow of a ship, not squared off. We'll start naturally with the roof panels themselves placed and then shrunk to a one by one square. Then drag the sides out three additional squares on each side. Next, place a short height full wall for reference and drag the height of the roof to equal the height of the wall. And swap out the shingles for plate, plate glass. Although definitely play around here, you can use different shingle styles for different looks. Place a single tile section of wall as shown. That will be our guide wall to construct the angled wall area that we're going to fill in. Then just delete the rest of the wall ahead of it. Next, place the floor above it and add exterior molding. Again, play with those you know, different molding styles to find the look that best fits you. I like a thicker one here for this particular look. To create the wall for the angled portion, we're going to use the rustic corbel found from the Seasons pack in three different configurations. My build will only incorporate the first design I'm doing here, but there will be three examples for you to see. For this example, enlarge this first corbel that we're placing once and place it on the wall as shown. Take an additional corbel and enlarge it twice. To do so, you'll press the right bracket on your keyboard. Use the in-game height slider by pressing the number 9 key to move the first corbel gently up the wall until it aligns with the second one and with the angle of the roof as shown. This gives a very effective appearance of angled side windows. We're going to repeat this process on the second floor by clicking on the roof on the first floor with our cursor and copying it and then placing it on the second floor so that it aligns with the roof wall below it. It won't be exact, but you'll never see that during live play. You can press the shift key and grab the lower portion of the roof to raise it higher, giving a more flush appearance if you like. I'm going to here, but in my penthouse, I left the overlap, which I thought was a more urban loftier look. Add walls, copy and paste the second floor in the same manner as the first and place it as a third floor. Make sure you have your guide wall in place in the same manner as before. For this, in, and in addition, for this next design style, we'll need to draw in a second and third guide wall for the corbels in front of the first one. We're not going to enlarge the corbels at all. Place them as shown, creating an overlapping patterned appearance. Take out the guide walls to see the more finished look. Then, as you can see here, I applied a few columns for a fuller, more completed look. Yeah, a little bit in advance. Normally I'd probably put those in at the end. On the third floor, our design will require two guide walls. The corbels will all be sized up once 
and then overlapped uh, in the same way as we did in the second design. This is my least favorite design as the graphical stutter is somewhat pronounced and I doubt I'll ever use it, but it's something I tried that might inspire someone else out there. Once done, there is still the central support column and while there is no way to rid ourselves of it completely, there is a way to minimize its visual impact and streamline it. I'm going to illustrate two methods here. The first method is only really suited to the ground floor. The second method will work for both the ground floor and upper floors. We're going to do the ground floor first. In both cases, we're going to start by building a small walled temporary room around the column. Then, in the case of this first floor, we're going to place the Energy King window from the base game into the three exterior walls and shrink the window down using the left bracket button until it disappears. Then delete the walls of the temporary room. This very nearly removes the entire column, but we are left with annoying posts as you can see here. I typically just cover these with columns from in-game. In this case, the thin modern experienced pillar, also a base game item. I like this look better because it seems like support columns and like it should be there while still being sleek with minimal impact. On the upper floors, we start the same, but in this case, I use the Tropicooler, 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 Tropicooler. Let's say Tropicooler, hope I'm saying that right. Jetstream window from Island Living. And after much trial and error, error these actually do work best. Um, so place them and shrink them down as before, then delete the walls again as before. Unfortunately, the windows do not completely disappear, but what remains can be easily covered in a variety of ways that complements the build, appears more realistically deliberate, and greatly lowers the visual impact of what was there before. I'm going to settle with this look here, incorporating some tropical foliage as a plant ledge. I may actually go ahead and string down some ferns from Jungle Adventure 2 in the end. I don't know how I'll change it, but it's going to look something like this. I recommend, I strongly recommend, strongly encourage you, play around with stuff. See what suits you best, what suits your build best. In the meantime, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post them below. Or even better, look me up on Twitter at JasonSterling70 and ask me there. Thanks for watching.